Nobody said it was going to be easy. Yagluth. Let's do it. Well, Viking, we finally reached the end of our land cleansing adventures for the early access. But it's not really the end. We're only just beginning. There's so much more to do, so much more to cleanse. But first, we're going to get to the last remaining boss. And for now, we focus on the half-skeleton god, Yagluth. When we left off in our last video, Motor was in tears. And we gained her power, which helped you with the wrong direction of the wind while sailing problem. She also dropped Dragon Tears. You would use these Dragon Tears to build yourself an artisan bench, which will allow you to build a spinning wheel and a windmill. The windmill is used to turn barley into flour, and the spinning wheel will turn flax into linen thread. We'll get to that later. In order to build the artisan table, you will need 10 wood and two Dragon Tears. Make sure you place this table close to where you're going to build your windmill or your spinning wheel. Or just build another one. It's completely up to you. You don't have to do it. You know. It's totally up to you. It is. Place it wherever you want. Okay. When you are traveling in the plains, you will come across these stone temple type structures and they look like this. These will have the Yagluth location stone housed within them. Read it. And now his location will appear on your map. To summon Yagluth, you're going to need five furling totems. You will place these on his altar as the sacrifice, then summon him with the stone in the middle of the altar. In order to find these totems, you will need to search the fueling camps, as well as these stone structures that are placed throughout the plains. The totem has a distinct purple glow, so you won't be able to miss it. But the camps are tough. When there's one furling, there's many. So make sure you're prepared. I recommend using frost arrows and the frost nerf, which is another weapon that you're going to use against the boss. As you've already discovered, the plains is a beautifully laid out land with dangerous guardians and plentiful ingredients. When you come across some goblins, it's not just one goblin, all the goblins or the furlings as their name states. You also have to come across a Berserker Furling, which is a Hulk smashing club wheeling goblin father who has devastating attacks. Don't even mess with the one star ones. Well, you can't. I mean, you'll beat them, but they're tough. You also come across the, the Furling Shaman. This Shaman will shoot fireballs at you as well as cast an overshield on itself and one of the goblins in the area, then embark on attacking you. If you die, it's okay, we all do. That is the beauty of this game. It's not easy and there is a challenge around every corner. You will find your wolf armor has use, but it's not at all adequate in the armor rating to take on one or two star furlings, or even the one or two star berserkers. This is why you have to hunt smart and try and stay alive the best you can. Now go out and attack those villages and take those spoils. The spoils are gonna consist of flax, barley, black metal, and just when you think you're safe, the Death Skeeter's Needle. The Death Skeeter's Needle can be used to craft very powerful needle arrows, and they will help you on taking villages on from a distance. But like I said, I recommend using the Frost Arrows. The flax can be spun into linen thread, which will then be used to craft the most powerful mace in the game, the Porcupine, as well as the next tiered armor, Padded Armor. As a side note, when you have the previous tiered armor leveled to its max, the armor rating will equal the starting armor rating of the next tiered armor. So our wolf armor pieces are at max level and they give you 26 armor per piece. Where the padded armor rating starts at 26 and maxes out at 32. In order to craft this padded armor, we're going to start with the padded greaves. You're going to need 10 iron and 20 linen thread. The padded cuirass, you're going to need 10 iron and 20 linen thread. The padded helmet, you're going to need 
10 iron, and 15 linen thread. And finally, the linen cape, which is one silver and 20 linen thread. The cape is fully up to you for cosmetic reasons. All capes, when they're fully leveled, have an armor rating of four, but each one will have a higher durability rating. So choose whichever you want, depending on how you want to look. To level this whole armor set up to its max level, which is level four, you're going to need 66 iron and 24 linen thread. This will bring your armor rating up to a 100 even. To get the linen thread, you're going to need a spinning wheel. You'll also need to make a garden in the plains. I suggest finding an area and fencing it off so you can farm it easily without hassle. The reason you need to garden in the plains is the barley and the flax don't grow in the meadows. So pull out your cultivator and prepare some dirt for your crops. As for the barley, when you have some harvested, take it to your windmill, which will hold up to 50 barley and it'll produce out the other end 50 flour. It only stacks in 20, so you're going to see multiple stacks when it's done. The barley flour will be used to make the next set of food as well as the next potions that you're going to need to fight this boss. The food I use for this fight is lox meat pie, serpent stew, and blood pudding. The combination of this food will give you 272 health and 285 stamina. And believe me, you'll need it. Now for the weapons I used. I took with me 200 frost arrows, as frost worked well on this boss. And I also made myself a frostner, which you'll need 10 ancient bark, 30 silver, and 5 Ymir flesh. The Ymir flesh can only be found from the merchant, so make sure you have some of your money and go and spend it. Oh, and you need five freeze glands as well to make this weapon. Level this weapon to the max level. You're going to need 90 silver. And that's it. An extra 90 silver. Who would have thought? So this hammer is modeled after Thor's hammer. And it deals blunt, frost, and spear damage. It also has a staggering knockback of 120. And since Yagluth takes spear damage, this weapon is a must. Or you could just use a silver sword if you're a sword person. Lastly, you're going to craft yourself a black metal shield and level it to max level as well. For a black metal shield, you're going to need 10 fine wood, 8 black metal, and 5 chains. You'll need an additional 6 chains and 12 black metal and 30 fine wood if you want to use this. You can use a tower shield, but remember, you can't parry with the tower shield. And there's going to be enemies spawning as well. So even though we've crafted the most powerful mace in the game, you're wondering why can't we use the porcupine? It's not very useful against him, so we're not going to use it. Because he is resistant to fierce damage. So, put it in a chest. Or just have it in your inventory if you like the way it looks. So when you're ready to do this, and you have all five totems... Head over to the Summoning Stone, and let's summon Yagluth and get this boss defeated. Oh yeah! I almost forgot. You're definitely going to need some fire resistance mead. And to craft this, you will first need barley wine base, which requires 10 raw barley and 10 cloudberries. Put this in your fermenter, and out will pop 6 fire resistance mead. I also took with me a medium stamina mead. Uh, it comes in handy. You need it. If you don't want to take some health mead with you, then don't. I didn't, but you can if you want. I also died twice. But that doesn't matter. So you're placing the totems and you're going to summon Yagluth. Be aware, he has three attacks and all are as powerful as the other. He has a fist slam that you'll notice he's going to do when he raises his hand in the air and it turns blue. When he slams the ground, this is an AoE attack and it deals blunt and terrain damage, as well as 100 fire damage over time. This is the reason you have your fire resistance potion. His second attack is another slam, except this time his hand glows orgy red, which causes a meteor-like stones to fall from the above and cause little fire explosions in the spots they land, dealing fire, blunt, 
and terrain damage. Lastly, watch out for his fire breath. This one is a very powerful and he could do it multiple times in a row. The breath usually is in a straight line and you can dodge it by moving from side to side, but don't get caught or it's lights out. Also, there will be skeletons and goblins aggroed to the area, so you'll have to watch out for them as well. And oh, don't forget the random aggroed death skeeto. That's always going to show. I'll let you watch the fight, and we'll see you later.
Now that wasn't so hard, now was it? <laughs> Yagluth drops a Yagluth thing and his trophy hit. Yagluth thing are just placeholders for what's to come. So hold on to them. Take the trophy over to the spawn, grab his power. Yagluth's power will give you frost, fire, and lightning damage resistance. So now that we've defeated all bosses, Viking, set out and explore all the lands. There is one biome to discover called the Ashlands. It's fire, so take the power and use it wisely. Thank you everybody for watching my Yagluth boss guide. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do and hit that like button. Also keep the bell on to see when I go live, which is every Tuesday to Friday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We will see you in the next video, Viking. So take care of yourself, take care of each other, and most importantly, please be kind and rewind.